Hello and welcome to you all. My name is Dr. A. Mark Cadigan and I'm the Assistant Registrar here at IT Sligo. And on behalf of the Registrar and myself and the whole of the Registrar's function, we'd like to welcome you to IT Sligo and we wish you every success and we hope you enjoy your studies with us. You might be new to third level education or you might be upskilling into some specialist area, but you are all very welcome. So today I'm going to cover a couple of things. I'm going to tell you about when and where your exams will occur for this academic year, what additional supports you might be able to avail of to help you through that process. I'll talk about the examination protocols and what to expect in the exam hall, how you access your results um, when they've been released. We'll talk a little bit about the exam procedures. And finally, I want to talk to you about a very important area called academic integrity. So the governance of examinations and of the wider quality assurance of all our academic affairs comes under the registrar's function. And the exams office specifically is located in the main building at IT Sligo opposite the library. And that's if you're on campus. But obviously as online students, you may never come to the campus during the year and may only come when you get to conferring. So all examination queries can go to examinations at IT Sligo and some of the people in the office then will pick up your query and we'll get back to you. Now to get this, the names of the specific people in the office you can go to the web link there and you'll see the specific names and email addresses. All important exam dates. For semester one this year the, for online students specifically, any examinations are going to occur in January for six days inclusive between Monday and Saturday, the 10th to the 15th of January. In semester two then, we may have some uh, early examinations for those taking work placements and they'll occur between the 21st and 25th of March. But most of you as online students will have your semester two exams again for six consecutive days between the 9th and the 14th, Monday to Saturday of May. So it's a very important that you flag those dates because you may need to take holidays and to keep those dates free from any significant work commitments. If you're taking a repeat examinations, they will occur between the 15th and the 26th of August. So where are the examination centres for this academic year for you as an online student? Well, normally our full time students come to campus at IT Sligo. Now that was restricted last year with COVID-19, but we are hoping to return to having exams on site. For online students, we will have two exam centres based in Ireland and an online facility for those based outside of Ireland. So the exam centres in Ireland are IT Sligo and Dublin. Now, while the venue is to be confirmed, we normally try and use the Red Cow Morn Hotel on the Nace Road. And they're for both the semester one and semester two exam sessions. For the repeat sessions in August, you must come to Sligo. That's the only venue offered. If your subject has a final practical exam or a presentation, you might have to come on site or that might be done online. But your lecturer will give you all the details specific to the modules that you're taking. The capacity for on-site examinations in for January 22 may be reduced slightly because of COVID, we're being a bit more cautious. So it may be a mix of traditional exams plus some alternative assessments and backed up with some online proctoring, which I'll talk to you about in a few moments. So what is online proctoring? This means that you take the exam at home or in your office the same as normal. You're monitored the same as you would be if you were physically on site here in an exam hall. The exam is recorded to make sure that there's no cheating, that you're not using notes or consulting with another person, either in person or on the internet or on a mobile phone. So this we do to ensure the integrity of our examinations. It's open to students who are online students and it's generally used by students who are abroad or people um, generally who maybe can't access the sites in Sligo or Dublin. 
there is a, there may be a small fee, but we'll confirm that later in the semester. And you'll be advised by your lecturer whether or not the exam is suitable for online proctoring as you go through the semester. So what types of exams are they? Are there just closed book exams? So these are the normal traditional exams that we would think of when we talk about exams. Obviously, you're not allowed notes or books um, and you're observed to some extent during the exam. Then we also have open book exams, which we used a lot more during COVID-19. This sounds like it should be easy. You're allowed to have whatever books you want with you during the exam. But the exam is designed a little bit differently in this case. It's more about applying the information that's in the books to a case study or a particular set of circumstances. So although it may sound easy, it can be quite a challenging exam. The exam may take the form of Moodle quizzes or um, uh, multiple choice questions or short answer questions either. So at the examination centre, what um, should you be thinking of? Make sure that you arrive at the centre early, at least 30 minutes before the start of the exam. Bring in your current student ID. If you don't have one, make sure you bring photographic ID. Read through the exam regulations very carefully in advance. They'll be sent to you via email or a link to them. They're in the student handbook on the website. So do make sure you have familiarised yourself with the requirements for the exam centre. Simple things like you're not allowed a mobile phone in the exam centre or any wearable technology. You can't bring in bags or coats. So do come prepared and leave valuables behind with somebody else or in a car. So the examination timetable then is a schedule of all the exams, which you'll have to look up. So you look up your programme and then you'll see all the timetabled exams for that programme laid out by year. Do check the examination timetables regularly. It does change. We've common exams across classes and sometimes something will change with another class that might impact yours. So they do change, don't screenshot them and think that that's written in stone. And right up to the last you know, few days, you do need to keep checking that. The, the timetable won't change to suit individual requests and we don't take any responsibility for students who miss an exam because they didn't check the timetable. And also be aware that the exams office, and in fact the college in general, will only communicate with you via your student IT Sligo email address and not your personal email address. The results then. So hopefully you'll be receiving good news at the end of the semester and you'll be able to log in via the web with a, a specific um, PIN number that will be sent to your email address. You'll be able to log in and see your results on the 10th of February for the semester one results and on the 10th of June for the semester two results. Following that, we'll then issue a copy, a sort of an official copy of your results, which is called a transcript through a piece of software called Digitary Core. And we'll email a link to you to that. And Digitary Core is like an electronic wallet full of documents. And by the end of your studies, you'll have gathered up various transcripts and even your parchment will be an electronic copy will be issued to Digitary Core so you can access it, forward it to employers, etc. Now, after the exams, there's a couple of days are nominated as feedback days. You can ask to speak to your lecturer, go through your results, get some feedback to understand how they arrived at the mark. If you're still not happy after that process, you can request an appeal of your examination results if you have some grounds for appeal. And then you're, you'll be asked to fill up a form. We'll get some information from your lecturer and then there'll be an independent review of your case by a, um, a group or a committee uh, uh, appointed for that purpose. In terms of additional supports, you may have um, dyslexia, you might have chronic illness, and we hope to provide as much support as possible to students to enable them to be successful and to get through your course. Uh, 
If you feel you're in that position, you should register with the Ex Access Office during the semester, not just at the exams, but early in the semester. And then prior to each exam, the Access Officer will work with the lecturers to give you some additional supports. They might be things like you might need extra time or there might be a technology that you can use that will help you uh, be successful in your, in your exams. And so some of the examination procedures that we have. I'm going to point you to two in particular. One is the de a deferral and the other is a special consideration. A student might want to request to defer an exam due to some personal per circumstances which prevents them from sitting the exam. You must apply within four days of the last timetabled exam and you must have some documentary evidence to support your application. You can apply online and a, a board which is made up of um, a committee of heads of department and other academics will look at all the applications and will decide if a deferral is warranted. It is important because if, um, if you don't defer then your result will be zero and that will be counted as an attempt. So when you do go to sit the exam the next time it will be capped. The other thing is a special consideration. This is when you've actually gone forward and sat the exam, but you feel there are circumstances that may have affected your examination performance. Again, you apply online during the exam period, and again, the, the uh, application is brought forward to the exam board, and we consider if um, that can be taken into account when reviewing your results. Another very important document is marks and standards, and that contains all the intricate detail of all the rules and regulations around exams. And you may need to familiarise your, yourself with that document uh, before examinations. Past exam papers are available through the library section of the website. Uh, all, most lecturers will also put the exam papers on the Moodle page for the particular module, so you'll be able to access them there and see, uh, so you know what to expect. And so, to the very important topic of academic integrity. This is the foundation stone of everything that we do in academia, and it's underpinned by honest and responsible scholarship. As a student, you will uh, be expected to submit other work and give credit where other people's ideas are quoted or used. We also are, as an academic, we build experience in creating and expressing our own ideas. And don't be afraid to express your own ideas. Your ideas are as good as anybody else's. But everything we do is built on the people that went before us. So when we use their ideas or information, we have to be very uh, cautious about we, how we do that and to acknowledge where ideas of, and writing has come from somebody else. Make sure you complete your assignments independently if that's what you've been asked to do. And don't use others to um, others work or others input when it is your independent assignment. Report lab results accurately and most of all, honesty during examinations. So academic integrity, it is the foundation of, of your academic success. And dishonesty not only cheats the, you as a student of the valuable learning experiences, but it can result in a failing grade or even expulsion from the institute, and you would be denied your academic award. So we do treat it very seriously. The purpose of assessment, that might be formative, where there's a grade assigned, or summative, where it's more of feedback, is to make sure that you as a student understand and you can demonstrate that you have achieved the intended learning or the learning outcome of that module. And it's your responsibility of, as a student to be clear in that. You may look at something that somebody has written and you think, well, I couldn't possibly write it as well as that person, but you can. And it's something you can develop with time 
to be able to say something in your own words. Now we have a module on our learning system, which is Moodle, to, that we will ask you to complete in order to build your understanding of what is academic activity and what we expect and what happens if you don't adhere to the general principles of academic integrity. I'd like to make you aware of a piece of legislation that was passed in 2019. And this um, legislation was specifically introduced to prosecute those who facilitate in academic cheating. The legislation was brought about through QQI, their Qualifications and Quality Assurance Ar uh, Quality Ireland, and they are a statutory legislative body who oversee quality assurance and academic matters in the third level uh, institutes throughout the country. And they have the power, as I said, to prosecute those who facilitate academic cheating. There are services out there that target students and encourage you to cheat by providing assignments or assist you with assignments for a fee. So it's important that you avoid those, that you, you can report them to us and we will try and block those websites from, from contacting other students, etc. At the end of the day, you need to stand and be proud of your award and the achievement that you have obtained and to know that you have achieved that honestly through your own hard work. Plagiarism means um, is academic misconduct and basically it means using somebody else's work or ideas as your own. Accurate referencing and developing your own skills in writing is very important to avoid plagiarism. At IT Sligo, we have a piece of software called Turnitin, which operates through Boodle, which we will ask you to submit your work through Turnitin. And this allows a lecturer to create, or for you as well, to see what we call an originality report. So it picks up sections of a document and it compares it to what's out there in the wider world and says where something similar has been written. So it allows a lecturer to see what parts are your own ideas in writing and what has been taken from the internet. So you can see the examples on the side here. Some of the sections have been, um, have been copied from the internet and that's what you want to avoid as you submit your assignments. In this example, you can see there is large paragraphs which has been taken directly from the work of others. And this is not allowed. We have to get used to rewriting, rephrasing that. So the work is now in our own words with reference to other work rather than taking the work in chunks. Infringements of these exam regulations are treated very seriously and these include copying or cheating in any examination or test or trying to communicate with somebody inside or outside the hall during an exam. Included in that is plagiarism, which I've already talked about. There are various levels and ranges of sanctions depending on where the student are in their journey and the particular incident that has incurred and the impact of that. So do make sure that you make yourself familiar with the various regulations. So in conclusion, I wish you well in your studies. Be confident in your own experiences. As online students, you bring a lot to the Institute. We look forward to working with you throughout your studies and the exams office is here to help you. So if you're in doubt, contact us as early as possible. The best way to contact us is through examinations at itsligo.ie and all the examination documents and policies are available on the website and this presentation will also be posted in the student support area on Moodle. So thank you for your time and I look forward to meeting you all in person.